Hello everyone, welcome back to RDLP. I'm Solon, and this is Hakuoki, demon of the fleeing blossom. You see that blossom over there? It's like, it's gone. It's it's out of here. There's a demon inside of it. Just leave that blossom alone. Don't go there. Not a good place. Little demons. But yes. Uh, we are back. We have been at this for about an hour. And uh, it's been a bit of a, a bit of an adventure. Um totally went to a random city, big city, and uh, kind of got ourselves involved with murder. And now we're kidnapped or held hostage in a weird way. But it's okay because the people that are holding us hostage also are looking for our dad. So we're just all gonna help each other. We're all gonna, we're all on the same page now. Everything's cool. We settled our differences. I witnessed a murder. I'm not gonna tell anyone about it. You know, we're all in the up and ups now. Everything's going good. Everything's just coming up, Cheezeru. So, yeah, well, uh, I think it's just a new day, so as far as the Let's Play goes, I'll be diving into some more reading and doing my best to juggle the about eight main ish guys that I'm trying to voice. Yeah, trying to just trying to make them not all sound pretty much the same. That's kind of my main goal that I'm, I'm trying to express with this. So yeah, <clears throat> I shivered a bit and grabbed a jacket from near the door to wrap my around myself. A week had passed since I'd begun living in the headquarters of the Shinsengumi. Okay, so it's actually been a week. Uh, we're, we're pretty cool with where we live now. Nobody at like, nobody in Kyoto is gonna be like, where's that girl that's supposed to be living here because we, don't, we never actually had a home here. So that worked out perfectly, cheap lodging. They, these are like the silver, silver lining of being held hostage. Beep. They allowed me to roam around the compound as I pleased, and I was given a room of my own. They weren't the best accommodations, but given that they very nearly murdered me instead, I thought it best not to complain. Still... But, however, we've been having this issue with transitions, but maybe it'll clear up. But, it probably won't. I looked down at my feet on the cold floor inside. Do I really need to dress like this all the time? Dress like what? It'd given me a place to live for the time being, but it hadn't been without conditions. I'm, I'm wearing clothes, right? Okay. The Shinsengumi will look after you, but we can't have a woman running around our headquarters. As he explained, if rumors were to spread that the Shinsengumi were keeping a woman in their compound, tongues would begin to wag. Ah! Wagging tongues. I don't necessarily know what that means in that context. It might even bring the people who are after my father to the Shinsengumi to search for me. That's a bit of a stretch, but you know, all right, fine. You've got your own. Uh, you got to keep face on. So keep your face on. Reputation. That's what I'm thinking of. You got to keep your reputation. Of course, they hadn't been able to determine whether or not he'd even been attacked. There were a great many questions left unanswered. We could ill afford any reckless decisions. Or so Hijikata told me. In other words, we need you to keep pretending to be a man. I doubt that's what you wanted to hear, but you do it or you're out on your ass, clear? Okay. Wait, out on our ass? That's fine. We're fine. We'll be out on our ass. That, get out. Yes. This reasoning was sound. But perhaps more than that, I knew he was looking out not only for the Shinsengumi, but also for the safety of my father and myself. Obviously, we're not trying to escape anymore. Now it's like, whatever, we'll just live here, not get killed, kind of protected from the city too, so that's cool. I didn't have a choice, of course, but knowing that made following his orders at least somewhat more palatable. I doubt you would do so intentionally, but the presence of a woman could disrupt morale, so to speak. His tone suggested he was joking, but it was clear that he was telling the truth as well. For that reason, only we, the Shinsengumi's leadership, will know the truth of your situation. If word were to get out, there's no telling how fast rumors could spread, or where to. I had to say a boy. All right then, what should I do while I'm here? Nothing. You're gonna get a room, and you're gonna stay in. Really? I could have sworn we decided she was gonna be someone's page. Hijikata turned to Okita and his eyes narrowed. Okita? 
Su- uh, Suji, keep your tongue in your mouth or I'll cut the fucking thing off. Angry man. He needs to take a chill pill. He needs to, like, increase his calm. Before long, I'd been there for a week. Well, before one week. <laughs> this line has a weird oxymoron in it. <laughs> I guess I don't have much of a choice. I'd prefer otherwise, of course, but I'll do what I have to. I wasn't quite sure what to make of it yet, but since I'd been dressing like a boy, I'd grown rather used to the feel of wearing pants and of having the Kodachi my father had given me always at my hip. He'd presented me with it when I was only a child and impressed upon me at least some sense of its importance. Little tiny sword. Supposedly, it had been in the Yukimura family for generations. As such, I was forced to take lessons in sword play, so I knew which end was meant for the enemy, but I had never much cared for weapons. They hurt people, of course. It was more than that, at least for me. For as far back as I could remember, any wounds I suffered healed at an incredible rate. Small cuts would disappear overnight. As a child, I thought nothing of it, but as I grew older, I began to realize that I was not quite normal. When I asked my father, he told me that it was a gift from the gods, but that I should tell no one of it. Ooh, exciting. I didn't tell anyone, of course. I was afraid they would treat me like a monster if, I, if they did. Ever since then, I've done my best not to get hurt. I stayed as far away from blades as I could, and before I realized it, I was rather afraid of them. Huh. Dressing as a man all the time was frustrating, as was carrying a sword, but it was my condition that worried me the most. We're playing as Wolverine. Oh god, X-23 is the Lady Wolverine, right? I think that's right. Still, this was not the only thing on my mind. <laughs> Although, to like, fill this in right now, just like, by the way, I am a superhero, and I'm a superhero the whole time. A little weird, interesting. The rank and file soldiers had been treating me coldly. I'm not just imagining it, right? I had heard having a private room was a rare privilege, even for the captains. For a child to appear out of nowhere and be given better treatment than their own captains, it was little wonder the soldiers resented me. <clears throat> True, I suppose I can't really blame them. Also, quite simply, I felt bad. I was enjoying the hospitality, such as it was, of the Shinsengumi, and so I felt I should help them in some way, but I knew nothing of soldiers in their ways. There wasn't much opportunity for me to learn, either. Ijikata had instructed me to leave my room as little as possible. From time to time, the captains or other officers would send me on an errand, on one errand or another, but I was nothing approaching a page. Most of the duties they gave me were things more suited for a maid than a soldier, and it made the rest of the men even more resentful for what appeared to be special treatment. Just watching me. To make sure I kept my mouth shut, they took turns keeping watch over me. My mistakes could mean serious trouble for them, so they were doing their best to keep me away from the other soldiers. Hmm. Then again, perhaps I was just a poor actor. The soldiers almost never spoke to me, but when they did, it was difficult for me to act manly. All too often, the captains had to step in to cover for me. Each time they did, it made it look as though I couldn't even manage to speak for myself. And I felt even worse. So it's like Wolverine meets Twelfth Knight. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> if I'm really going to stay here, I'd like to be friends with at least some of them. But I can't exactly tell them the truth, can I? Indeed, I couldn't, and so I had no choice but to stay out of the way and keep to myself. It wasn't a pleasant experience, and I was beginning to feel depressed. Yeah, if I'm supposed to stay out of the way, I shouldn't be leaving my room, but very much wanted to go look after my father. However, even after a week had passed, I was still not allowed to leave headquarters. I'd come in Kyoto in search of my father, but for the time being, it seemed that search had stopped in its tracks. Perhaps I thought I could talk to Hijikata if he would give me permission to look for my father. Oh no, that's right. Hijikata had left on a trip to Osaka several days before. Oh my god. Stop it. Stop it. Perhaps I can sneak out while he's not here. I wasn't sure what to do. Hmm. Well, either way, we're gonna run into someone. And that, I have no idea who, so I have no idea what to steer it in. So these are just three random choices. No idea. Um... Let's let's do the daring thing. Let's got all exciting. Let's search the compound. As I thought about it, I realized that I had no idea how the Shinsengumi compound was laid out. If I was to live there, I thought, then I ought to make it an effort to learn. Ooh, so who are we gonna run into if we search the compound? There's no one here. I looked around. 
The hall was utterly empty. Then again, I realized since I'd snuck out of my room, it was probably for the best nobody's seen me. Still, I felt a little guilty about it. Perhaps I should have just stayed in my room. If I wandered around the compound, there was a good chance I'd see something I wasn't supposed to. I'd already stumbled onto one of the Shinsengumi's secrets the night I met them. I had no wish to do it again. Ah, uh, I know! That's why I chose this, so that you could stumble upon something stupid. Just want something exciting to happen. I suppose it's better to know than be ignorant, but... I'd promised to forget what I'd seen that night. What should I do? Oh my god! As I turned to walk back... From somewhere near the entrance, I heard something. I hope it's murder! Slowly, I looked around the corner. Walking toward the door, looking as if they would really prefer not to be seen, were Harada and Nagakura. Oh! What's up, dudes? What? Can I come with you? Maybe if they let me go outside, I could finally start looking for my father. Like a lost puppy. Well, I don't really care, but I don't think you're gonna have a lot of fun. Hey, no, you idiot, you can't take her. You don't have the authority to give her permission to leave anyway. Poked Harada in the chest as he spoke. There was something almost nervous in his manner. Huh? Oh, right. Eh, we aren't supposed to let you out of the house, huh? They don't even let you out of your room without an escort. Hmm. Ellipsy's face. Well, um. Do a spin move. Lie. Chizuru. Figure out something. Where you going? There you go. Change the subject. Dang it! No, 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 changing the subject. Oh, well, whatever. We're on our way to Shimabara, if you really want to know. Shimabara? Name was familiar. Wait, that's that's the red light district, isn't it? Nagakura looked back and forth, between us inside. <sighs> Come on, what are you doing? Tell the girl the truth about us going to Shimabara. You know me, I can't lie. Besides, it's not like we're going to be doing anything bad. <laughs> not you, maybe. You're just coming along to drink. Nagakura, are you gonna... are you going for something other than the alcohol? He made a face I couldn't interpret and looked away. True, there were probably a lot of beautiful women in Shimabara. Someone like Harada, who just went to drink, was probably pretty rare. But you're going in the afternoon? Isn't that every man... isn't that every man's dream? Harada didn't seem terribly concerned about the appearance of impropriety. Well, even so, I hardly think it's good to be drinking in the afternoon. Even if it was every man's dream, I still couldn't bring myself to condone it. Two of their captains drinking in the middle of the afternoon would hardly help the already low opinion of the Shinsengumi. And again, it's not like it's really my business to care about how people thought of the Shinsengumi. Stop it. Yeah, I see your point. It's not really proper to be screwing around so early in the day. Proper Yukimura. Yukimura. Doing her thing. Did indeed find it inappropriate, but his emphasis, emphasis on the qualifier worried me. Kyoto's been really dangerous lately, though. We can't exactly go have our fun at night like normal people. True. So the hell with how appropriate it is. A man's gotta live. We're gonna party whenever we feel like it. He lives his face. Jesus is all like... I don't like this, this doesn't sound right. Oh, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> but even so, on some level, his absurd logic made sense. After all, everyone needs to relax from time to time, especially if they have to, the worries of the students and Gumi. And if they worked at night, then when else would they go but at the afternoon? It makes them sound like vigilante heroes or something. I'm the night, I am the Batman. I'm the Shinsengumi. I was still thinking on what... Uh, on that one, Toto walked in. Oh, Chizuru, you coming too? Still haven't been given permission to leave the house, so I don't want Hijikata to get mad at me. Shook my head and gave a little shrug. Toto's face fell a little bit. So, you're going to Shimabara too then, Toto? Oh, uh, well, yeah, look at Chizuru. You don't have to call me Toto, okay? Just feels kind of cold, you know? Ah, uh, well, what do I call you again? Just call me Ace, okay? Everyone else does. After all, we're gonna be living together for quite a while. That makes it easier on me. I have a much better time pronouncing Ace, okay? Is it really okay? I mean, I don't want to be rude. Not enthusiastically. All right then, Ace, okay? Make my job easy. Right there, you go. So what do you say we start over? Hello, Jesus Rubes. Pleasure to meet you. Give me a short friendly bow. Okay, it's a pleasure to meet you too, Ace, okay? 
It wasn't anything important I knew, but something about the exchange made me feel happy. Whether or not he'd intended to, Heisuke had cheered me up. But... You don't say but! That's the narrative! You're still going to Shimabara, then. He opened his mouth and closed it again, unsure what to say. I'm not going there for the girls, I just want to hang out with the guys, you know? Oh, really no. The rest of the men treated him like a little brother, so it was easy to forget, but uh, Heisuke was an adult. At any rate, I'd heard he could hold his liquor well enough. As I looked at his smile, I simply couldn't bring myself to try and stop him. 